Welcome, fellow castigators. Today I'd like to talk about my personal hero, Doctor Who. Specifically, the first incarnation. I'd like to go over what makes him worthy of your time and why he embodies what Doctor Who is meant to be. If you're American, you probably haven't seen anything beyond or before the Tenth Doctor. If you're British, it's likely you've noticed that what you've been seeing lately greatly betrays the very premise of the show. Many people have played the Doctor, all with differing personalities, but there are certain aspects of the character that must remain the same in order to maintain the believability that they're all the same person. To me, he is inherently a grumpy British man. English, Scottish, Welsh, or Irish doesn't matter, but he was hoping for ginger, eh? The grumpiness can vary. Whether that means the Sixth Doctor's egotism, the Third Doctor's resolute nature, or the Tenth Doctor's rage, I could go on. It's clear that the Doctor often isn't very nice, even if he's always kind. That being said, William Hartnell is all of these things to a T. He's crotchety and demanding, but also funny and generous. He gave the first heartfelt speech in the series, establishing the Doctor's difficulty with goodbyes. During the filming of the pilot, the Doctor was more harsh and caustic, but it was decided that the character should be more like the actor himself. According to first Doctor Who director Warris Hussein, Hartnell was naturally eccentric. William Russell, who played companion Ian Chesterton, said that he was unpredictable, which gave him an aura of mystery. This, of course, could make him hard to work with, as he could be severe and short-tempered. That well-known fact would later be overblown into accusations that he was anti-Semitic, which doesn't line up with the adoration he had for his Jewish co-star Carol Ann Ford. Besides the acting, by far the best aspect of the first Doctor era is the writing. It's well known that the show had a low budget, which resulted in cheap costumes and sets, but it's the story that really holds your attention. In fact, I'd say part one of An Unearthly Child is an excellent contender for the most gripping 20 minutes in television. I'm endlessly impressed with it. The Daleks is a timely story of Thals that have irradiated into creatures that know nothing but hate. It's no surprise they went on to be such a juggernaut. The Keys of Marinus is generally considered the first great episode where the TARDIS team must go on a fetch quest for a MacGuffin in pieces. In my mind, it's very much the ancestor to the fantastic Key to Time series. One of my favorites, though, is the Dalek Invasion of Earth. It's full of cheeky moments and has a great character arc for the Doctor, where he has to come to terms with Susan becoming a woman. As for other portrayals of the first Doctor, Richard Herndl does a fine job in The Five Doctors. Unfortunately, Hartnell had already passed away, and uh, <laughs> this was ironically Herndl's last role. The next person to play the first Doctor on screen was David Bradley in the docudrama An Adventure in Space and Time. Bradley plays him with so much heart, it's impossible not to tear up at some point in the film. As much as I love Day of the Doctor, An Adventure in Space and Time is the superior 50th anniversary special. Much to my delight, David Bradley returned for the actual show in Twice Upon a Time. His chemistry with Peter Capaldi is evident, and the contrast between the oldest Doctor and the youngest Doctor is very interesting to watch play out. I especially love the scene where Bill asks the Doctor why he ran away from Gallifrey. It's so poignant. My one complaint is the suggestion that the first Doctor is sexist when he implies that Polly dusted the TARDIS. As someone who has seen all the original serials multiple times, I can confirm that there's no evidence for this. Despite being patriarchal, the Doctor is perfectly respectful to the female characters. The rumor was spun from an episode where he implies that Susan needs to be punished. But remember this was one time, and he's talking about his granddaughter, who he probably did punish when she was much younger. Not to mention it's from the same episode where he has to let Susan go. 
It's all part of his arc. If you're not yet convinced, let me point out that Polly was combative and never would have been made to dust the TARDIS. This is especially evidenced in the second Doctor episode, The Highlanders, where she is easily one of the most feminist scenes in the classic series. Besides that, I do like the character development in Twice Upon a Time, and it is satisfying to see his moments uh, leading up to his regeneration, considering those crucial parts of the Tenth Planet are still missing. Overall, William Hartnell defined Doctor Who in ways that the writers wouldn't think of. The only Doctors to get close to his timeless look are probably Paul McGann or Peter Capaldi. I think the Doctor should always look out of place wherever he is, as long as it isn't too distracting. I know when I get older that I'll become grumpy and irritable, whether I like it or not, but I hope I'm also irreverent and witty, just like the Doctor. After all, what's the point in being grown-up if you can't be childish sometimes? I also hope more people choose to watch his mesmerizing episodes and come to revere the history of Doctor Who.